Okay, good day everybody. Happy Friday. I uh, just want to give you a quick little video on this concept of polynomial long division. And I uh, just want to let you know that we'll review this a little bit on Monday when I come back. Uh, but we'll also uh, jump into this thing called synthetic division, which after doing polynomial division, I think you will enjoy this. So let's talk about long division. And let's go way back to, uh, I don't know, when did you first learn about long division? Maybe third, fourth grade, second grade? I'm not real sure. But that's essentially what we're doing, is long division from way back when you were in elementary school. So if we look at this first problem right here, 53,255 divided by 22, um, let's talk about how we have to do this with long division. And remember, we make that little long division sign. I don't remember what that thing is called. And then we put the 53,255 underneath there. And whatever we're dividing by, we put uh, on the outside here. And then we go ahead and uh, do our division. So we got to figure out how many times 22 goes into 53. And that's going to be twice. And then what do we do with this 2? <coughs> Excuse me. We go 2 times 22, which is 44. And we put it right down there. And then we subtract. And 53 minus 44 is 9. And then the next thing we do is we take this 2 and we bring it down. So sometimes teachers put a little arrow right there as a reminder to bring that down. So I got a 2. And then I repeat the process. So I go, how many times does 92 or 22 go into 92? And that answer is 4. And then I go 22 times 4, and I get 88, and I subtract. 92 minus 88 is 4, and then I bring my 5 down. And then I go ahead and go, uh, how many times does 22 go, even, go into 44? The answer is twice. 2, or, two times 22 uh, is 44. I think I just misspoke there. Uh, subtract, and we get 1. And then I bring down my last 5, and I have 15. Now, 22 does not go evenly into 15. So we could continue on with this problem, and we could get decimals over here. We don't want decimals. We want exact answers. So what we do here for our final answer is we go ahead and write what it is. It's 242. And then we use this right here, our remainder, as part of our fraction. So we're going to have a fraction in the answer. So the final answer will be 242 and 15 over 22. Okay? So we want to leave our answers with fractions and not decimals. And how do we get that fraction? We take our remainder and put it over what we're dividing by. Now, let's apply that, that principle or those principles to a polynomial. Okay? So let's look at this one right here. We got x to the third plus x squared minus 2x. So, setup. Setup's going to be the same. The x to the third plus x squared minus 2x goes underneath. And then we put the x on the outside here. Okay? Now, over in this problem, we said, how many times does 22 go into 53? And we got an answer of 2. For this problem, we have to have a different thought process. We have to say, what do I need to multiply x by to get x to the third? Well, x times x squared equals x to the third. Okay, so the process, let me repeat that. I got to say, okay, I have x. What do I need to multiply x by to get x to the third? And the answer to that is x squared. And that's what goes up there. Now what do we do? We do kind of what we did over here before. Here we went 2 times 22 and we got 44 and then we subtracted. Here we're going to go x squared times x and get x to the third. And then we're going to subtract. 
And so x to the third minus x to the third is zero. And then what's the next thing we did over here? We brought the number down. And so I'm going to bring this down. And it's going to be x squared. And we, we repeat that process. We say, okay, what do I have to multiply x by to get x squared? And the answer to that is x. Now, one difference that we're going to put in here is we're going to put a plus in between each of these terms. Okay? And that's because we have a polynomial. And if you think about this, this, this 242 is really 200 plus 40 plus 2. But we don't write that with numbers. We just put the numbers down. Over here we have x squared and now we have a plus x. Now, to finish off this problem, or to continue on with this problem, I should say, I have to go, okay, what is x times x is x squared, and then we subtract. And x squared minus x squared is 0. Bring down the negative 2x. Don't forget about that negative. And I have to now say, what do I need to multiply x by to get negative 2x? And that's going to be negative 2, so plus negative 2. And I'm going to say negative 2 times x is negative 2x. I'm going to subtract this, which means I have to distribute that like that. So it becomes plus 2x, and we get 0. So what does that mean our final answer is when we divide these things out? Our answer is right here, up top, just like it was before. x squared plus x minus 2. All right, let's go on to the next one. So the next one, we have x to the third plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And this time, we're going to divide in x plus 1. So x3 plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And then x plus 1 goes right there. So our setup process is the same. Our thought process is the same also. I have to uh, look at this first term out here, the x, just the x. And I got to say, what do I need to multiply x by to get x to the third? And we need to multiply x by x squared to get x to the third. So once again, repeat. You only have to look at this piece right here, the first term, and say, well, what do I need to multiply this term by to get that term? Now, the next step's a little bit different because uh, over here, we took x squared times x, okay? Here, we have to go x squared times both of these and put it down below here. So I have x squared times x is x to the third. And then I have x squared times 1, which is x squared. Now, we need to subtract that. And we need to subtract the whole thing. So we got to put the uh, expression, the x to the third plus x squared inside of parentheses, and then subtract it. And what do we need to do with this subtraction sign? We need to distribute it. So both of those in there become negative when we distribute that subtraction sign. And so let's go ahead and subtract now. And x to the third and negative x to the third cancels each other out. This should always happen. These first terms should cancel out. 2x uh, plus negative x is, as 2x squared plus negative x is x squared. Now we want to bring our next term down. So we have minus x. <clears throat> and we repeat the process. So I got to say, what do I have to multiply x by to get x squared? And the answer to that is x. And then I go x times x and I get x squared, and I go x times 1, and I get x. Put this in parentheses, subtract it, distribute the subtraction, they both become negative. The x squareds will cancel out this time. Remember that first term we always wanted to cancel out. Negative x and negative x is negative 2x. 
and we repeat the process. Bring down that minus 2. And then I have to say, what do I have to multiply this x by to get negative 2x? And that is obviously negative 2. I go negative 2 times x, and I get negative 2x. I go negative 2 times 1, and I get negative 2. Put that in parentheses. Subtract. Distribute my subtraction sign, which changes all those to positive, and look at what I get. I get 0. All right, what does that mean my answer is? x squared plus x minus 2. Okay. Now, the fact that these two answers are the same is just coincidence. These are examples from the book. And for some reason, the book thought it'd be funny to give you the same answer every time. You won't get the same answer every time. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave this one to you to do and to practice on it. You should get an answer. This is bad. You're going to get an answer of x squared plus x minus 2. Once again, for some reason, someone in the, wrote this book thought it'd be funny to give the same answer every time. But I want to look at this last one here, okay? Because that's a little more complex. And we don't get an answer of x squared plus x minus 2. <coughs> so, looking at this one, we set it up the same way like we done before. So I'm going to put uh, 2x to the fourth plus 3x to the third. Now notice, notice something, okay? So before you do this one, matter of fact, let's just not do this one, okay? Notice something here. Notice that we've got an x to the fourth and x to the third, but we don't have an x squared here, okay? When we don't have an x squared, what you need to do is you need to put a placeholder in. So anytime we're missing one of our uh, uh, variables with the exponents, for lack of a better way to describe it, we need to put that filler in. Okay? Plus 5x minus 1. Okay? The stuff underneath the uh, division thingy, whatever that's called, okay? Always make sure that your exponents go down by one every time. If you are missing one, like we were missing the 0x squared here, okay? We were missing an x squared. you got to put it in as a placeholder. So keep that in mind. you got to have your placeholders. So always check that. So now if you want to go back and do this one, you can see we're missing a placeholder of 0x. Okay? So I can't emphasize that enough. I'll reemphasize it on Monday um, when we come back. Okay, so what goes out here? x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now the process, once we have all of our placeholders in place, is exactly the same. I've got to look at the first term, which is x squared, and say, what do I have to multiply x squared by to get 2x to the fourth? Well, obviously, we've got to multiply by 2, and then to go from x squared to x to the fourth, I've got to multiply by x squared. <coughs> and now I have to take this 2x squared and multiply it by each one of these. So if I go 2x squared times x squared, I get 2x to the fourth. That's what we want to have happen. And then I go uh, 2x squared times 3x, and I get 6x to the third. And then I go 2x squared times 2, and I get 4x squared. And you can see right there why that placeholder is so important, that placeholder of 0x squared because you have to have it there because you're going to end up with x squareds when you do some multiplication. And so it's got to be there. <coughs> All right, now we're going to subtract, which means I distribute my negative throughout there, change the signs, and then 2x to the fourth and negative 2x to the fourth cancels out. 
3x to the third minus 6x to the third is negative 3x to the third. 0 minus 4 is minus 4x squared. We bring down our next term, the 5x. And we repeat the process to go from x squared to negative 3x to the third. It's going to be negative 3x. And now I have to take that negative 3x and multiply it by each one of these. So negative 3x times x squared is negative 3x to the third. Negative 3x times positive 3x is negative 9 x squared. Negative 3x times 2, negative 6x. Put that in parentheses. Subtract it, which means I'm going to change all of these signs. And add straight down. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 4 plus 9 is positive 5 x squared plus 11x. Bring down the minus 1. Repeat the process. To go from x squared to 5x squared, I need to multiply by 5. Oh, look, that placeholder comes into play, play again. All right, 5 times x squared. 5x squared. 5 times 3x. 15x. 5 times 2, 10. Put it in parentheses. Subtract. Distribute our subtraction. Add straight down. 5x squared is cancel. 11 minus 15 is negative 4x. And negative 1 plus negative 10 is negative 11. Okay? All right. Notice here we still got something left. Okay? But we can't really say x squared times something, or I really can't say what times x squared comes out to be negative 4x because this exponent is too high. It's higher than this one. So once you get down to here where this exponent is, up in what you're dividing by is higher than the exponents here, you can stop. And you need to write your answer. And your answer is going to have a remainder. Okay, like this problem had a remainder. So when we write our final answer, it's going to look like this. We start with all of this stuff here, the 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. And then we put another addition sign there. And what we need to add to it is this is the numerator of a fraction. And this right here is the denominator. x squared plus 3x plus 2. All right. I've emailed you your assignment. And I wish you the best of luck. I'll be back Monday. And if you're nice to the sub, I may show you a shortcut way to do this. Wouldn't that be nice? Peace.